Hello and welcome to Mile High Reef First. I'm Scott Anderson, and it's been about six months since I've set up my 210 gallon tank. So I'm well overdue for a full tank overview. So come check it out. So here's the full tank overview, and I think it's looking great. I've had lots of coral growth, I've added a lot of corals, and I've added actually some live rock to it too. Now, I didn't plan on adding a live rock to this system, but a guy at work was shutting a tank down. It was kind of one of those deals where you had to take everything or nothing. So I took all of his live <coughs> livestock, which included his live rock, and that live rock is actually what you see on the very top of the center of the tank. And I think it actually looks really cool. Now I know for whatever reason these days the wall effect is completely out of fashion, but I love it. I mean, this gives me the maximum amount of space to put coral. And believe it or not, I've actually still got lots of flow through areas for the water. So tons of caves, rocks are up on end, so you can still blast water through there so the detritus isn't settling and I've also got lots of starfish and a strong cleanup crew to take care of anything that does blast through there so that little addition to the aqua tape I think is really cool I've got rocks basically floor to ceiling now and I think that looks really good the other thing that's been going on is my tangs had ick and it's been about a month now, give or take a week, and there has been absolutely no ick on these guys. So I am super happy with that. So with the livestock purchase that I did buying the guy's tank at work, I got two more clownfish, and they're actually percula clowns, and those are really cool. They look like the Ocellaris, but they're a lot darker. You can kind of see them over there on the left. And so far, the perks are getting along with the Ocellaris just fine. I'm having no aggression issues whatsoever. I was afraid to put them in this tank because if there were aggression issues, I would really struggle to get them out. I mean, with a tank this big, once a fish goes in, it's tough to get them out. Now for the problem child of the tank. This is Kevin, our clown goby. And as you can see, he's moved into the toadstool leather. And by doing that, he has really annoyed the toadstool leather. And the toadstool leather doesn't want to open up now. I've moved the toadstool leather to two or three different positions. And Kevin just follows it. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. I might end up having to take Kevin out of there. but. For now, I love the fish, he's really cool, but he's a pain. Here's another new addition to the tank. This is the Algae Blenny. And this guy just has so much personality. He is not the prettiest fish in the tank, but just look at him, he's a cute little fella. And he hops around the tank, and you know what? When it comes feeding time, he will absolutely get out there and feed with the big boys. So, very cool little fish. And the rest of the fish are doing really well. The mandarins getting fat, happy, growing, no issues. I've still got four bangies in the tank and they're just rocking it. They hang out in the middle of the tank now, no issues there. The chromies are definitely fun fish to watch. Um, I actually want to get more for this tank. I think they're great. And there is also a little scooter blunny, which is actually a species of dragon net. Um, they're supposed to be pretty difficult to maintain, but you know what? In my tank, it's been as easy as the mandarin, but you know what? I've got loads of pods and loads of everything, so so far, no issues with him either. I've divided my tank into basically four parts. On the left, I've got the soft corals. On the right are LPS top center is mainly SPS and down low are a mix of 
Xenia and Zoas and Brains that don't mind the lower light. And this is not by design. This is just more by what will actually thrive. When you're putting a tank together, you have to look at what corals you're putting next to each other because some of them will grow explosively, some will sting. It's just, you got to kind of consider what you're doing. You need the right writing requirements. So when I did all this, I had different plans, but you know what? When I'm trying to tailor everything to the tank, this is what I ended up with. And to be honest, I think it looks fantastic. And this Sinulaire is a good example of the kind of growth you can get. This coral was a little tiny frag, maybe, maybe three inches across when I bought him um, two and a half, three years ago. And now he's enormous. He's probably the biggest single coral in the tank. Um, and he has gone to, grown two, three times this size in just the last six months since he's been in this 210. So whatever it is about this positioning, it loves it and I'm not touching it. I'm not moving it. I love this coral. So down here next to him is another Sinulara and it's doing really well. I got this one at the same time I got all the live rock and the other fish. This was one of the corals he had in his tank and just like the other Sinulara, it's been growing fast, it's been expanding out, coloration's been great, and it's had no issues. Next to him is a little Kenya tree, and it's struggling. Um, I got probably going to move him right after this video. You can see he's parked right next to a mini maxi carpet anemone, and that keeps stinging him. So that spot just isn't going to work out for him. I really like that spot for him. But since I probably can't move the mini maxi without killing him, it's probably a lot easier to move the Kenya tree. Below him is the green mushroom. It's an elephant ear mushroom, and its growth has been tremendous, and the coloration's fantastic. I love these things. It's a $15 coral that's huge and looks like that. How can you go wrong? And you know what? I'm just loving softies all together. Always have, always will. Big rock candy mountain, as I like to call it. Just candy canes and zoas and pallies and some xenia because you can't control it. It's doing great. No issues at all. I've started buying some gorgs. Um, I got these guys dirt cheap. They're at Petco. Don't ask me why Petco's selling gorgs. Um... But hey, you know what? 15 bucks for some nice gorgs I'm in. I think they're great. And then up high are the Plating Montes. And because of my position of the camera, I can't zoom in. But there's a little damage on the Plating Monty because I had my Condylactus anemone right there stinging the crap out of everything. But no worries. They're going to come right back to life no issues um the only thing that is a little odd is the condi was there i've um been playing with my water flow a little bit added a pump and then i readjusted my lighting and the condi has wandered off i have no idea where that guy is at so here's my latest purchase this is a green and brown monty cap got this at the lfs and if you see there's a little white line running down the scrolling portion of it and that's actually where I broke him. If you've ever tried to move a large Monty cap, they're really big fragile corals and in the process of trying to glue them down, I broke him but I glued them together hopefully he'll grow back together and not have any issues. But you know what, I love these Monty caps. Their growth is awesome, the patterning's awesome and I just thought that position, that shape, it just looks so organic like it's supposed to be there. I think it looks really neat. Then we have my orange Digi. Um, put that guy under just direct LEDs and it just bleached him out. So he's recovering. He's not the bright orange that he was, but he's doing pretty good. I've got a couple frog spawns up here. As you know, I love frog spawns. Um, really any euphelia, but 
I've been really buying frog spawns because I'm afraid they're going to be unobtainable here. The government's going to decide I can't buy them anymore. Even even the Maria culture and aquaculture stuff. So I've been picking them up when I see them. And I think they look great. And this is that same rock that I was talking about earlier that basically gives me floor to ceiling. These guys are right up against the surface and I just think it's such a cool look. And then I've got SPS's mixed in there. Those are all digis. There's a millipora in there and another hammer colony. Another <clears throat> another purple and green frog spawning back. And then I purchased this guy a few weeks ago. This is another orange digi. Completely different species than the one we saw. And it's this really burnt orange color and it looks brown on the video at least the monitor I'm looking at right now but in real life it is this just wonderful burnt orange my dad's got a 74 Granville convertible that's a burnt orange and this is like the same color I love it and then here's my bird's nest this is one I've had for quite a while um, it was in the 90 gallon kept getting knocked around nearly died and you know what it's growing. The coloration is a little goofy, but it's a mix of pinks and browns and a little bit of green. But you know what? It's actually growing pretty well, so I'm happy with it. One of the corals I really want to get is I want to get another big pink bird's nest colony. That is on my list of corals to buy. And that's kind of what this whole barren section is here. This is the SPSs I want to buy. I want to get a big Pavona. I want to get a big pink bird's nest. And then either an Acro or a Millie or a Stylophora or something. But something big to fill the space and really make it look impressive is what I'm shooting for here. And then in this section, I'm trying to kind of do the mix between the LPS and the SPS and make the blend happen. And this metallic green wall hammer was at a local reef show. Um, and you know what? This thing is big. It's beautiful. It was inexpensive. And you know what? It's one of the jewels of my tank at this point. I, I am thrilled by them. Below him is this red Monty. This thing has been with me for years. It's uh, been a slow grower, but you know what? Since it's been in this tank, the coloration's coming back, the growth is coming back, everything is just where it needs to be. So I'm actually really hopeful for the future on him that he'll speed up. Here's a green Tubriana. Um, he is kind of closed up. I moved his position yesterday. Not sure if he'll stay here, but um, anyways, beautiful coral. Just got to figure out what's going to actually work for him. So this Duncan's colony is one that's been with me for several years now. I just moved to this position. I don't think it likes the water flow here, so I'll probably be moving it, trying to find something a little better for it, but it's been a really happy healthy colony for me so I need to make sure I do my best to take care of this thing this big green brain has been fantastic um, I've struggled with every other brain I've had but this one I bought early on plopped under high light and supposedly brains don't do well under high light and that's been my experience with the others but this guy highlight highlight brilliant color good growth how do you complain with that? Below him is another cup coral. It's just beautiful, lovely, has never given me any problems. I plopped him there like right when I put the tank together. Hasn't moved since. Been fantastic. The pink wall hammer closed up, does this every day. It's been doing every, this every day for several years now. I'm not worried about him every morning he opens up beautifully and then he closes up in the afternoon for whatever reason this is how he is and then of course the crown jewel of the tank is the gold hammer 
The Gold Hammer is my favorite core on the tank, hands down. It is just so gorgeous. And it is big, it's open, it never gives me any problems. It is just my favorite coral. I've got this pagoda down here, and it's doing okay. You can see the polyps aren't open a lot right now, which is actually unusual for this coral. But if you look down towards the bottom here, you're going to see this green algae. All of that used to be colored by that same blue colored flesh. And it's been receding, so I don't know what the long term holds for him, but he looks healthy in the fact that he's always open and looking like he's doing well. So below the pagoda is a green branching hammer, and it's doing great. It's split from two heads into four heads, and it continues to grow, and it's actually getting a little close to my clam. Next to it's another little species of Singulara Leather, and next to him is my Devil's Hand. All of it's doing pretty well. The Devil's Hand has just never gotten real happy in this tank. Don't know why, but, um, you know, it's not dying, so I leave him there. It seems like with stuff like this, the worst thing you can do is just keep moving it around. So for the center of my tank, I've got loads of Xenia. There's bunch of brains, there's polyps, and it's a really cool look. I've also added this Gorg. Um, when I bought my Gorgs, I bought three of them. I split one off, and well, it was this guy that got split off. This one Gorg is struggling. The others are doing fantastic. No issues with them. But for whatever reason, this guy is just not doing well. He's in high light. He's in good, relatively high light anyways. Um, He's in pretty good water flow, and he's just not happy. Behind them is my Favia. My Favia has stopped receding. That's great, except I've lost 80% of the coral. Um, but you know what? He's there. He's happy. He's as good as he's going to be for a long time, and I'm just going to let him hang out. Next to him is my Purple Worm Brain. It has also stopped receding. But, of course, I've also lost 60-70% of this guy, which is very depressing. And next to him is the pink pineapple brain, who is still who has just started receding lately. I think this is actually my fault, because I tried putting him in high light early on. He bleached out pretty good, and, of course, I think that's why he's receding. He just never really recovered well from that bleaching event. And then there's my big giant clab. When I got this guy, he was this little tiny fellow, maybe two inches across, three inches if I want to exaggerate a little bit. And look at him now. He is 10, 12 inches from front to back and probably six, eight inches when he's fully open like this. And the coloration's amazing. He has just been a wonderful addition to this tank. Then, of course, I've got the other Gorg, and this has been an amazing coral for me. You just saw the failure of one Gorg. Well, this is a giant success. Um, this guy has grown three new branches. He's extended well. Well, he's got full polyps. This thing is doing amazing. And, in fact, I put him over the bubble coral right below him. And he's actually grown enough. He's starting to shade the bubble coral, which is amazing. I mean, we're talking a month, a month and a half that he's been in this tank. And with that kind of explosive growth, I'm blown away by it. I think it's great. And then, of course, below him is the bubble coral. This bubble coral is beautiful. I love this coral. And it's just been here. It just thrives in the the conditions of this spot and you know what that is perfect I got nothing else I want to put here and have something this beautiful it works great for me and then kind of last but not least I've got encrusting Gorgonian and GSP the GSP I'm debating on whether I want to keep it GSP can be incredibly invasive but I think at the very least I'm gonna grow this rock out the encrusting Gorgonia I've kind of got trapped on that rock unless it wants to grow onto the rock that has the GSP on it. 
um, basically because of where it's sitting it's heavily shadowed everywhere else so it can just hang, hang out right there otherwise this would be a very invasive species of coral but it is a really cool kind of like blowing carpet and I really enjoy having this thing all right and there's a full tank view of the tank it's been six months I am really happy with the way everything's come out so thanks for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers and if you haven't yet subscribed I highly advise you do I'm always putting new stuff out there and you can follow me as I continue to grow this tank thanks for watching bye